All right, see the dude that just caught it? Yeah. Incoming freshman. I'll introduce you to him. What? Be a running back. Yeah. Take, yeah. Incoming, real deal. Oh, 11, 200. As a freshman? Yep. And I got another f freshman that's over there. And then you've seen our tackle in there, I'm sure. Yeah, he's free shows. He took one look at him, was able to watch him move, was able to watch his ball skills. I'll bring him over here after, and you can at least um, meet him. Like, we were in the middle of the game. Uh, it was Coach Dillingham from ASU. He called me over, asked me what, what my favorite schools are. And it was surreal, because like, I was eighth grade at the time. And he was like, um, you can always go to ASU, we're gonna offer you a scholarship. And then I just started smiling, and I gave him a hug. After it happened, he came up to me and said, Dad, they offered me. You know, and he was super, super duper happy about it. And I was happy too. You know, I didn't get scholarships when I was, scholarship offers when I was, in a, when I was a freshman in high school. No, th that didn't happen, you know. Bash is starting three freshmen right now. They got Anatonia Tahi uh, on the defensive line, Jay Kildebrand, offensive line, and Noah Roberts, their uh, stud freshman running back. Last year, you're playing youth football with 13 and 12 year olds and now you're at 6 8 this is a real big physical uh, jump from freshman to varsity it's a little nerve-wracking just because the, all these kids are like two three four years older than i am on um, varsity they're a lot bigger they hit a lot harder they're stronger they're older everything <laughs> you could tell the difference between getting hit by them and like like a, a freshman or a sophomore my mom was nervous she wanted me to stick with freshmen just to dumb it on there. Seeing how a freshman can come in and contribute on the varsity is always challenging. Yeah, Basher really has three studs in that freshman class that all start on varsity. <laughs> Noah Roberts, I mean, to show you how special of a kid that is, he missed a few weeks this season. He got hurt midway through, and it kind of affected Bash's offense. Coach McDonald, he said, Cody, I have a running back who is extremely talented, very special, could be one of the best anybody's ever seen in the state of Arizona. Man, Noah Roberts, uh, you know, one of the exciting young running backs that we've got in the state. He's got a great football IQ for his age. I've been really impressed with that. We used to go to football games, but we didn't really watch the football hey, games. We strategized a lot. You know immediately from his size, his stature, his, his football awareness, his intelligence, that Noah is just head over heels above the, the competition, at least at his age. Why now, Noah, why now? Having a kid like Noah Roberts who's already built like a senior running back, he has the quickness and the athleticism and the strength of a senior tailback as a freshman, is truly sensational. Noah kind of had a coming out party against Saguaro and showed what he's capable of doing. The game-winning touchdown is definitely him stepping up in a huge moment. He became Bash's running back at that moment. A lot of Noah's friends were at Bash. And these friends he had been knowing since he was six or seven years old. Uh, I met Jake when I was seven years old, playing with the Chandler Bears. Yeah, me and him were always on the same team. He was an offense and D lineman. I was always like a running back receiver and safety. When he was eight years old, Jake would make a huge hole and Noah would just take off. And when they had their first varsity game, same thing. Jake and Sam made a big, huge hole and Noah got his first touchdown. It brought tears to my eyes 
like it is now because I've seen these kids grow up together and I see that they're going to continue going with it. You look at Jake and he's a big kid. Even though he looks like a grown man, you know, he's, he's still a kid. And they line up and they're overloaded over here, right? Yeah. To our stud side or whatever. Right. Well, it doesn't make sense to what? On the goal line to run there. So we're just going to check sneak and find the bubble. This is one of the biggest freshman football players I've ever seen in my life. I'm only 28, but I've been around football my entire life. This kid is a monster. He looks like a tower. I've always been big. Some kids would always think I was the teacher, like, because I was so big. You know, I mean, he's still a kid. You know, just two years ago, I had these linemen over at my home, and they're playing Legos. These are big kids and big, big boys. We have Disney Channel on, and we're playing Legos. There's a physical maturity growth between a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old. There's four years of weight room experience. He came right here, he got no pillar, and he, boom. What's got to happen here? Yeah, now I can get back into this. Technique takes 6,000 times of practice before it becomes automatic habit. Freshmen don't have that. Offensive linemen are some of the last kids ever offered. The Oregon offensive assistant line coach came up to me and said, that's the, the kid I'm looking at. That's the only kid here we're looking at. We go to ASU and the ASU coaches were all over him and his size got him that scholarship opportunity. When he put some film together, we're talking about a 30 to 40 Division I off of kid. Hi, Tony. Good job, buddy. You looked awesome out there. Okay, wait. Tony, get in there. I got to get pictures of you. Uh, big Tony. All right, I've known Tony since 12 years. We was on the same team, the Bears. Man, Tony's just funny. He's just funny. He's a goofy kid. Uh, I love him to death. He's a funny kid. I have a, I have a blast. He's the life of the room. Maybe if I was in Noah's body, I'd score a lot. I would love to be fast, too. <laughs> Go. I knew he was a physical kid. He had an opportunity to come up and get coached, coached up. And um, he has not looked back since. Tony is big, like real big. He's always been that way. I'm 6'1". I'm 303 right now, 300 pounds. He's just a, a big, big man and young man. And he can move. He's athletic with that. My mom didn't want me playing football. You know, he was so much into football that he, he wanted a helmet. And it didn't matter what kind of helmet it was. He just wanted it. Her sister had got him a bike helmet. A neon green bike helmet. But she didn't know he wanted a football helmet. Every morning you just hear, doom, doom. Here he is, you know, hitting the walls, and he's got his hel bike helmet on. And every wall, and we're like, Ani, Tony, stop it. You're going to put holes in the wall. When you're a freshman, defense alignment is probably the hardest position to really get going on just because your opposition, those offense alignment, have been lifting for four years in the high school weight room. They're big, they're taught to be big, nasty, and physical. What I have to learn most about is technique. Ah, I can't miss, go in. Hey, and don't be too fast to get over the top, right? I liked everything that you did, but don't be, let's get our hands on first, right? Like all the tackling stuff I learned from rugby. That kid is already pretty strong, pretty violent football player. There you go, good. Only thing I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna do it one more time. Each week he's getting better. He's a 14 year old kid still. Hey. Come out. Woo. Tony wasn't down. Here we go. I just want to prove to like all the people out there on the seniors that I'm not just some small little weak freshman. I want to let them know that I belong here. This is the top freshman class in the state, and three of them are playing up on varsity. Over at Chandler, like they don't really play freshman on varsity at all. Your performance has to get a whole lot better. You got three weeks to get it better. If you don't get better than what we were the other night, it's going to be a short run in the playoffs. You just cannot make mistakes like this. And we're trying to stop the run. Yeah. 
And what they like to run is uh, zone. zone. I say about two. The Chandler Basha game is monumental because Chandler wants their revenge. Basha beat him twice last year, and that has not sat well with the Wolves. Effort, effort, effort. Some guys are doing the effort, and your technique is getting us killed. We're going to find out who the big dog really is. The only way Bash can get there is to go through Chandler. That is not a good pocket. We're going to play a quarterback. When the pocket looks like that, he's out. Some guys have technique, no effort. They are in, looks like, overhawk. Guaranteed three more games, guaranteed, in the regular season. Got you can have six games if you really want it. The best player at the running back. still play true. You got three weeks to get it better. And you can't trip and fall along the way. Hey, there he is. There he is. Jack Blyer is a tough loss, and I, I don't know. I don't know immediately how they recover. That is a devastating blow to not only Bash's defense, but the entire team. You know, everything that's going to happen to you, especially seventh game of your senior season, um, and then it just like happens. It's just a shock. It's not like a shocking feeling of that it's over. Table easy. Don't make it hurt super bad. It is grow up time, okay? You have to have kids step up. It's a tough task. I mean, those, those are all underclassmen kind of thrown into the fire a little bit, obviously with Chandler and a big game. You see what I'm saying? So look, that's number three. Listen, whoa, 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 whoa. This is as far as you go, my boy. <laughs> Me head's in the box. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep that meat in the ice box. <laughs> I don't think you just feel that overnight. What we're doing right now is trying to compensate for Jack. A feeling a void of Jack Blyer, frankly, is impossible. Oh my God, why? Why? You look across this defense now and it's getting younger and younger. And you know, some of these names that we're all so familiar with, they aren't there anymore. Like, you know, Basha, you know, they, they're young guys have to step up. They have to show that these young bears are ready to eat. Set, hit, show the square, Dante. You gotta get lower, kid, or you're not going downhill. Good, free Start going live. Tell me when. Three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to Jim Wall Stadium where the 6-1 Chandler Wolves hit the road to take on the 6-1 Basher Bears. I'm expecting the Chandler Basher game to be a playoff type atmosphere. You got two of the top five teams in the state battling in and out. You know, you better be ready to play from uh, whether it's Basher, whether it's Perry, whether it's Hamilton. It's, uh, that's how it should be. That's why you come to play at Chandler. That's why you come to play at 6A ball, you know, with the big boys. Those players want Basha. Those players have wanted to play Basha. Okay, and the coaching staff, they are excited to face Basha. This is the premier region. They're itching for this rematch, and they are out for revenge. You saw them in the pregame. They're trying to win the pregame, right? Yes, sir. They're trying to take something from us. Region championship on the line. That's why you guys work your ass off all year. For these moments. So let's finish. You good? Yes, right, let's go. It's kind of turned into a, a pretty intense game um, over the last couple of years. Tim, tonight's matchup is a big rematch from last year in the playoffs. There's still that doubt. Oh, it was a fluke last year, this, that, and the other. Let's stamp it tonight. Let's stamp it tonight that we own the city of Chandler. We're not Basha, we're Chandler Basha. There's a reason why I have reporters say Chandler Basha. Okay, football fans. Let's play some football! Weather is uh, nice and clear. Solid temperature, we're looking at around 88 degrees out here. Geo on the sweep there to the right, he breaks the tackle and stays on his feet. The 30, the 20, the 10, and he's in for the touchdown. Bash's first score of the night on the third play of the game. It's first drive, first possession. They offer a lot of challenges. They have uh, quite a few uh, run pass concepts. 
What we want to do is first eliminate the run. Right. Going for the run again, Dasha was ready. We're gonna load the box. That's that favorite oh, play oh, inside zone. Oh, you understand? That's too much. There is most definitely and tension between some, these two some teams. Oh, oh referees on the game. Flags flying. How you win these games, these big games, is you win the turnover battle. DeMar Williams, the absolute X factor, okay, and not turning over the football. Right side, and he oh. fumbles. Oh no, oh. that is definitely recovered by Chandler. He almost gets sacked, he has pressure. He tries to throw it. What is with the breakdowns in the secondary? Touchdown, Wolf. Hey, next drive, we gotta score. Bash's lead is slowly collapsing here as they are already almost in field goal range now with Chandler. And he finds somebody wide at the back. And Chandler's in the lead now. It, it's, it's blown coverage after P well, P it, it's is, four games with P.I., P.I., P.I. Something's going wrong on the defense right now. And we're not disciplined enough to stay in our gap. So you know what y'all start doing? Peeking. And then he sees one of y'all goofballs get out your gap, and then he hits it. Either the coach or Brody or some player is is, is going to give some type of speech or something. I mean, they got to get these players hyped. They got to get fired up, and they got to get over the mistakes. Okay, throw it before he gets to the yeah, but like mid range. It, it, it'd be better mid range back shoulder. We are letting them hang with us. Do your job. Get to your gap. Cover your guy! What are we doing? There's too much in the backfield. Too locked in the backfield. You cannot sack the quarterback from 20 yards deep. Get out of there. We play to win. We don't play not to lose. We play to win. Be the aggressor. Take it. Don't wait for somebody else. Got it? Let's go win this game. Night keeps crawling on as this battle rages on. Currently, the Bears are in the lead, 17 to 14. What do the Bears need to do to pull through and win? Um, so, first of all, they need to get more pressure to their quarterback. He throws it to number two, and he wrapped it in. All right, boys. All right, coach, what in? Give it to Noah, give it to Noah. Oh, good keeper, good keeper. Touchdown Bears! Touchdown by number nine, Devon Williams Jr. Devon Williams is not human. Yeah, like, he's an alien. He must have came into this stadium on a spaceship. Up here, we got to come down. Face mask. I mean, it can't be unsportsmanlike or 45 face mask. Roberts again, off the right side. Limping coming off the sideline may have hurt his ankle there. Come on, Gio. What are we doing? What are you doing? He sees a hole. Gio's going. Go, Gio. 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 Timeout, Chandler. Fourth and three, we had to punt at that time. It was a minute 47 left in the game. They had no timeouts. The thought was to, to pin them back. This drive was basically the ball game. Sack on the play by number 61, Brody Jones. If we get a stop, the game is over, we can kneel it down. And that's a yeah! And Joe! 
Wolves and Trojan. The Wolves and Sheridan only two. Go back to the Bears. 47. And that's the game. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them again, you know, in the open. I think they're, they're, that's an open team. 